Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today I wanted to do a quick little flip through of my finished Q4 bullet journal. So I didn't bullet journal for all of 2023. I started in Q4 of that year, last year now. So this is the only bullet journal that I have for the year. I moved into a B6 for 2024 because when I counted these pages, the unused ones, I would only have had enough pages for one and a half months. Um, and I didn't really want to just have, I didn't want it to mess up the numbers for my next bullet journal. So I have an Archer and Olive Traveler's Notebook and I actually have it inside the Hinoki Traveler's Notebook like case. It's not an actual like regular Traveler's Notebook like dot grid journal cover. It's one for the actual um, like Traveler's Notebooks, like real Traveler's Notebooks, not like an actual journal. So I just pulled the like elastic through the middle of my notebook. And that's how I have been using this. And I will say that I have adored this. And I really wish they had one the same size as the B6 notebook because I would buy it in a heartbeat to put that over my B6 um, bullet journal for 2024 if so. So I used this kind of pink, like drink uh, pattern from Archer and Olive. I think I got this in a subscription kit or something like that. Cause I don't think, I don't think this is something that I would have purchased myself. It's super cute, but like it's, it's very bright for me. <laughs> so that's another reason that I have it in this cover because I don't really see the cover of the notebook whenever I am just carrying it around. So here is my journal. I just have like my regular nameplate page and then I added a little key for myself. I did a grid spacing guide and a 2023 cover page. And I have a setup video for this beginning pages setup and I think I have one for all of the months that are in here as well. So I will link that playlist uh, my bullet journal playlist up in the little eye thingy up there uh, for you if you're interested in checking all of those out. For my future log, um, I added a little calendar on this side and then just had some other like random space over on here to write down any events that would be coming up in the upcoming months. And then I just put birthdays and holidays over here and just highlighted them with a zig dot marker. This was my content planner. So I did, I think this is called the Alistair method. I just gave my videos a title and then checked off once I planned them, filmed them, edited them, uh, did the cover photo for the YouTube upload and then uploaded them. These, since I was doing this in Q4 of last year, these were ideas and plans for October daily and December daily. And I really enjoyed having this in my bullet journal because I found it super, super helpful. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. So I really enjoyed having this in my journal um, as ideas for what I wanted to do. I also had a YouTube and Instagram tracker in here. So um, in Q4, I feel like I grew quite a bit, but I also only have this going by hundreds. So if you've subscribed to me, thank you so much. Um, I love when y'all comment on my videos. I do try to respond to all comments and I really appreciate you being here and chatting with me uh, when my videos are posted. If you are not uh, following me on Instagram, I do post over on Instagram pretty much every time I upload a video and sometimes I post additional stuff over there as well. And then I have a cycle tracker. Um, these two pages, when I did my initial setup, I had left blank. 
Uh, this one is obviously still blank, but yeah, then we will move into September. I just had some things that happened. So like I got COVID in September, so I marked off the entire time that I was sick. Other events, important things that I wanted to do that month. This is the first time I kept track of my orders in this month format. And this is when I realized that I was getting a little bit ridiculous with my order placement. And I really enjoyed having the bullet journal here to tell me and show me <laughs> what I was doing so that in the months following, you'll see that decrease significantly. Over here, I have currently's. And I keep track of what I'm currently reading, watching, and playing. This, I think, was my favorite. Well, no, I don't think this was my favorite mood tracker. But I did really love this mood tracker that I did. And um, I was only tracking three habits for the month of September. This is the only month that I actually wrote out or did layouts for each of the weeks. But I also adore the way that these came out these planning pages were so cute but while they were adorable and I really loved having them like this I felt like it was just a lot of time so I kind of modified it mid-October for to fit like my lifestyle a little bit better for October, I did a potions theme. I loved, I think October might be my favorite in this whole, this whole journal. I had my calendar spread again. My orders, I separated out any subscriptions that I had. A lot of these have been canceled uh, by now as January of 2024. And then you'll see that my order is kind of decreased as well. I'm still tracking the same currently's. This mood tracker was my favorite. These little potion bottles. This took ages for me to draw and I adore looking back at this. And my habit trackers in this cute little frames. Like I just love this setup. I also added a little bucket list for this month because I had an extra page because I started keeping track of blood sugars in my bullet journal. And then I did the first week in my actual setup. And then for my next week, I kind of started doing daily planning, I guess, or weekly planning. The same method that, that's actually done in the actual bullet journal method, where you go day by day, instead of kind of doing weekly formatting like this, you just kind of write Monday and then do your things. And then once you're done with Monday, you just start Tuesday. So I did give these each a decorative title, which I really like. And I would like to start doing this again, at least adding the cute little decorative titles, because I think it really just kind of plays into whatever theme I was doing that month. For this page, I didn't go as decorative with my titles and I just stuck a bunch of my extra stickers down here just to take up some extra space. Then I had planned a Halloween potluck. So I did um, what dishes we were being, what were being, what dishes were being made and then who was bringing them, things that needed to be cleaned and then groceries I needed to pick up for this and when it was happening. And then just back to my regular daily planning. I had a lot of space down here at the bottom of this one. So I just stamped out. I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. And then the last two days of the month, there's a lot of empty space on these two, but I wanted to have a full page for my November setup. So I just kind of left it as is. This was my November setup. I used the Paper Minty Studio September kit, I believe, for this whole setup. This calendar, I think, is one of my favorites. Super cute. I'm doing the same thing on these two pages for my orders and currentlies and just keeping track of reading, watching, and playing. And then any orders that I place as well as any subscriptions that I should be getting. 
For these, I just do a little circle and I usually use this little thing from Archer and Olive. I'm not sure if it's gonna focus on that right away. I use this little metal uh, stencil from Archer and Olive. And I'll just do a little circle and then check it off once I've received it. I'll, I don't add the circle until I get the shipping notification. So if I skip it, I'll just kind of mark it off. But then once it ships, I'll put a circle. And then once I receive it, I'll add a circle or a check mark in the circle. Another really cute mood tracker. And then my habits. And then on this side for my extra page, I just kind of did a Thanksgiving prep page. And then went in to my daily. I mostly do planning as a ongoing task list, which is why this particular method works super well for me. Because then if I skip a day, which happens, I think, somewhere in here. It might be in December where it's more obvious, but if I don't come into my bullet journal, I don't have any just blank weekly kind of setup pages. So if I skip a day, I can just continue on with the next day. So this one has Monday, Thursday, and Friday, or no, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, because I didn't do any journaling for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. <laughs> And then this one just has Monday and Tuesday. I'm not sure why I left these blank, but I'm sure it was probably for a reason. And then this one I just had Thursday, which I think was the last day of November. And then we are into December. This one, I just kind of added any things that were happening in December that I may have wanted to add into my December daily album just in case like so we went for photos with Santa on the 17th so I kind of marked that on the calendar. I didn't place any orders in the month of no December so go me and then a couple of these I canceled or I skipped for this month and then I have my reading, watching, and playing. I have my moods, which I didn't fill out completely for this month because it's been super crazy busy. Um, and then I have habits. I've been adding exercise in here, but I have not been exercising at all. So that's been going great for me. Then I have sugars, which I did not record any of the test results that I got at all. <laughs> So I'm hoping to kind of revisit that this year and get better at that again. And then I had just had this page here to write down any of the presents that we were going to be getting for the kids that I still needed to grab or pick up. And then we get into the daily planning. This one, I was just, I found stickers and I was just sticking them all over the place like this these daily pages don't look cute at all. So there's quite a lot of just stuff that doesn't match anything. And then here are the more recent ones. And then I had left myself some space in case I was going to go into the next set of pages. And then over here, had started making myself a list for things that I wanted to put in my yearly collections for 2024. And then the back of this, I've just been stamping off things and then testing markers. And these are all blank pages right here, which I will likely just use for scrap or replacement papers or anything like that. But that is it. That's all I have here for my 2023 Q4 bullet journal. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you have any thoughts or opinions or if there's anything specific that you would like to see me do as like a bullet journal theme. Let me know that in the comments below as well. I'm always looking for ideas and inspiration when it comes to setting up those types of themes in my bullet journal. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.